In Chapter 3, I report on other areas of interest. We didn't audit these topics, but I believe these are important matters of interest that raise questions that I think are worthy of being asked. The topics can actually vary from year to year. This year, we sent a survey to government departments, public service units, and government organizations looking for information on cybersecurity risk management and the use of purchasing cards to acquire goods and services. We also followed up on previous year's issues, including fraud risk management and public sector pensions. Our questioning in this area noted that the province's cybersecurity risk management program continues to be developed. The province has created a risk management division and adopted a recognized framework to address risk. However, the province told us that there are still things to be done. For example, there is more work to be done in improving managing cybersecurity risks across government. We also surveyed 10 government organizations and found a varied understanding of cybersecurity responsibilities. For example, there were two organizations that noted they are not responsible for cybersecurity, yet in fact they do have responsibilities. And four organizations indicated they don't have in place a cybersecurity risk management program, which could also be concerning. Four of the eight organizations surveyed that used purchasing cards did not assess the risk around their use. We also noted that of the eight surveyed organizations that use purchasing cards, one has not implemented a purchasing card policy. While purchasing cards can be an efficient way to purchase, risks involved need to be handled well. We found that while government departments and organizations have taken some steps to manage fraud risk, I believe they are not acting quickly enough. For example, our survey showed that nearly half of all government departments have not yet completed a fraud risk assessment, including Service Nova Scotia and Internal Services, a department with significant control weaknesses in the areas of government purchasing and payments. We also see slow progress in implementing complete and timely fraud risk management programs in the education sector, where six of the educational organizations did not have a fraud policy and have not yet completed fraud risk assessments. The government decided two years ago that mandatory fraud training was required. However, as of March 31, 2019, three government departments reported that less than 35% of their staff members had taken this mandatory training. For example, at the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure and Renewal, only 11% of staff had completed the required fraud training. Studies show that the use of a fraud tip hotline is the most effective method of detecting fraud. Although the government initially confirmed its fraud tip hotline would be operating in December 2018, this has not yet happened. Likewise, Many government organizations have not yet evaluated the need for a fraud tip hotline. While it is good to see government doing many good things in the area of fraud risk management, with $12 billion in annual expenditures, government needs to manage fraud risks more quickly. The last thing I touch on is the Nova Scotia Teachers Pension Plan. We noted that during the past year, the province, the Nova Scotia Teachers Union, and the trustee of the plan are looking for ways to improve the long-term health of the plan and I'm encouraged by that and I will continue to monitor developments in this area. Here are some questions Nova Scotians may wish to ask relating to cybersecurity, purchasing cards, fraud risk management and the Nova Scotia Teachers Pension Plan.